Eleanor. How are you? Hi. Caroline. Welcome, Billy, Monica. Good to see you all. Good to see you. This is so much fun. I'm so glad we have so much interest in learning what it's about, what it is to be a Temple Circle leader. So <laughs> thank you. And if you're watching this in a recorded mode, we're glad you're watching. And please call any one of us, including Eleanor, because she'll be an expert by then, to find <laughs> out, if, to ask any questions you might have. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see if I can figure out how to go to the next one. It's not working. <laughs> Why isn't it working? Let's see. There we go. All right. So um, uh, there are some notes, but I don't have them right in front of me. Um, so we're going to start talking about what's involved with being a Temple Circle leader. Um, and we're going to give a little history and then give you a, a general outline of what it what is, ask questions, uh, answer questions. And then if there's continued interest, we will send you the leadership handbook, which has more details and, and help you and answer any questions along the way. So um, we have a mission statement um, for temple, temple Circles. This mission statement was worked on um, three years ago, reworked, reworded, approved by the uh, Board of Trustees at Temple Emanuel, and um, it reads, Billy, you want to read our mission statement? Absolutely. Our Temple Circles initiative encourages our Temple family to form groups that have shared interests and passions in order to seek, engage, and transform caring and supportive relationships among themselves, with the Temple Emmanuel community, and with Judaism. And everything we do, or we try to do in Temple Circles is live into this statement. So we don't do something that doesn't, doesn't live into this mission. So, okay. So um, I know there was a part, um, interviews that were done several years ago with the entire congregation or with part of the congregation. And to make a long story short, the outcome of those focus groups or however it was done, it was before my time. So it must be probably six or seven years ago. Um, the definite outcome was that people wanted more ways to engage with each other, to communicate with each other. And, and that, that is really the, the thought or the outcome of that survey was what created our Temple Circle mission, our and Temple can, Circle's mission and our Temple Circle initiative. Monica can, or Billy, do you have anything you want to add to that? Sure, I can add something. So um, to add to what Marilyn already said is um, small groups are also um, kind of the history of why we decided to start the initiative here at Temple Emmanuel is that they've been very successful in churches and synagogues have adopted this model as we tend to do, um, to expand our congregational family and our, the larger Jewish community. So right now in the modern synagogue, we've recognized that it's not about what the synagogue creates, but what the congregant creates, because if the space isn't meant um, to cater to the congregational needs, um, it's kind of defeating the purpose. So once we hired a director of engagement, um, there is a strong foundation that su or support from the temple to help temple circles thrive in our community with both staff and leadership on board. Um, as far as what happens during this temple circle gathering, um, it's not lim it's included but not limited to schmoozing, getting to know each other, a little something Jewish. And when we say a little something Jewish, it could be something as big as um, studying Torah or Haftorah as Billy does, or it could just be a, uh, like a, a blessing, a blessing over your meal before you hang out and do your activity. Right. So it could be a mozi, uh, you know, just a little something Jewish. Um, so it's, of course, you're going to have your sharing stories and table talk at your gathering um, your activity, whatever your circle is based upon, you definitely want to do that. And, um, all of these things, ultimately the goal is to deepen your friendships, build relationships and enhance your temple Emmanuel experience. 
um, and grow your own personal leadership as well. Right. Any questions, anyone? Want to add anything? Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. I'm working with three screens, so it, I, I sometimes forget where I am. Um, so we're going to talk about, uh, this is a little video about small groups. We call our small groups Temple Circles. So I'm going to play this video. Hopefully you can hear it. Let me know. Did you share sound? I did. Good. That was a nice little video, just to give a sense of what small groups are about. Ooh, what is that? I guess that's- I'm looking at Mr. Bean's. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All I right. love Mr. Bean, love it. So as but Monica mentioned, um, the small group concept did start in the church world. It's been around for years and years. Some of the churches have as many as, I mean, I'm just making up the number. 10,000 groups and, yeah. and, that's, and they survive. That's how they survive because there's no way for there to be close relationships. Whoops. So while you're doing that, I'm just going to say, so people kind of think of small groups as a church thing, which it certainly is, but it's also become very big in the, in the synagogue, temple, congregational Jewish world. And, um, these are just an example of a few of the ones that are, are, have been the basis for our small group initiative called Temple Circles. So there's um, Central Synagogue, there's Mount Zion somewhere, there's um, Shemai Emanuel, um, Temple Emanuel, I think that one's in Dallas. So there are way more than that since we created this PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. um, so people say, <laughs> what should small groups do? Or what, what small, you know, what's the guidelines? So it starts with having a clearly defined, well-articulated purpose, having consistent leadership, develop or ut utilize a, a curriculum, if it's a curriculum needed or an agenda, or just an outline of what's going to happen during that gathering. They should have some kind of a set meeting schedule or one that can be flexible, but that everybody knows about and agrees upon, upon. And as Monica mentioned, doing something Jewish or having a Jewish moment or, or just sharing what's going on in Temple Emmanuel or in the community Jewishly, something that distinguishes our temple circles from some outside club, secular club. What makes us different? Because, you know, uh, we could have a, a crocheting, is that what you wanted? A yarn thing that Billy yeah. wants to lead. That could be done in anywhere. But why, why you know, what makes it Jewish? So we want to mm -hmm. make sure it has that. So we have another little video that I'm going to share. So, um, so, so um, everything that was just listed in there, there's a lot of detail in, in the leadership guide, in our handbooks, that if someone has an interest as a result of this presentation, 
we can go much further or someone, sometimes people say, yes, I want to do this. And then it, there's even a, another conversation. So there's always someone to hold your hand through the whole process, even through the whole time that the circle is, is in existence. Um, so next step, recap. Billy, you want to go through this? You want to talk? So it's not Certainly. all. Certainly. So um, just to kind of address what Marilyn said, um, I, I will say that it looked really structured in that it, kind of what we've been talking about sounds kind of structured, but really it's all about kind of doing your passion and communicating, like getting the meeting information out there, inviting people to come. Um, but if you have any issues, anything like that, um, you're going to have a coach that you can talk it over with. As well as if you maybe hit a wall as far as ideas about what you're going to do at your next meeting, you have a coach. So you're not on your own. Um, so the next steps would be to think of something that you already love to do and or something you want to try. For example, I'm currently doing a Hof Torah one because I've studied Torah for years, but I wanted to get past book five. So I thought, well, I'm going to start a small group. And I'm going to read it, and, you know, I'm, it's self-led, but I've done some studying, and everybody brings in their own Jewish history, their own Jewish knowledge, and it's, it's wonderful. I'm doing it again this time. And I'll give you an example of, of I have not led a circle yet, but, but I've, I've been really involved, as has Billy and Bonica, who have both led circles, with, with getting the initiative off the ground. But I am going to lead a circle for the spring. And Earl, and I like to do things with Earl, and he and I like to socialize, and we go out, and we like to drink and eat and whatever. But, so we're going to have a Havdalah on every, not every Saturday night, but we're, our circle is going to be Havdalah. It might be Havdalah around the world. People will share and go around and do their own Havdalah service at their homes, outside, um, and, and it'll be that kind of socializing, doing Havdalah and eating and drinking. So, um, you know, and so it's it's why we want it to be something that you like to do. The leader right. has to want to do that. Doesn't have to be the teacher expert. Doesn't have to even know anything about the subject, but just wants to have an interest. Go right. On, and then last time Monica did um, an Israeli film one, and that was very well received. And she hadn't previewed all the films. She didn't know what she was getting everybody into. And she kind of figured it out as she went along and it turned out really Blank. wonderfully. Pick something that you love to do. And while we don't want the groups to be filled with all of your vast amount of friends, Eleanor, we'd like you to find one or two people that might be interested in doing that, to kind of get it going with you. And then we as a temple will help you get the rest. Now, we'll, I will say that during these times, it's a little bit challenging, especially if you want to do something in person. However, we're going to do our best to make sure that there's other participants other than just your friends, because that's really the point. You could have your own friendship group, but that's not what this is about. So you get your idea, you got your friends, you submit your idea online, or we can even do an online interest form, although no, there's no in-person at all right now. Um, you kind of think about your schedule. Well, actually, let me just... Uh... Correct. There, there were, uh, we're done now. Everybody's done. But there was a biking and there was a hiking. They were in person. No, um, it's, it's interest forms. Oh, the, oh, intro, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there could be, there could be in person. We have recommendations for the COVID situation right now, right. which is outside socially distance if you're going to do it. Or maybe think about doing it a little later in the session, which we can talk about, Marilyn. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the schedule, you're going to think about, like, you have this idea you have got a couple, maybe one or two people who are interested in doing it with you. You put in um, your interest form, and then you think about your schedule. Um, I personally went ahead and did the schedule that was best for me, and I put it out there so that people knew if they signed up for my group, these are the days that we're meeting. Other people have said, we are going to talk to everybody during the first meeting to determine what the schedule is for everybody. That way everybody has input in the schedule. So it's however you want to handle that. However, you're just gonna have to come up with a schedule with your first meeting and then be open to the uh, idea that maybe the next meeting will be on a Sunday instead of a Wednesday or whatever, you know, once you discuss it. 
Um, our next session, it says it begins in March, but really you can start as early as February 15th. And you can start even later than that. People, um, we're gonna talk about that in a moment, but it, we're only requiring that you have six meetings during the session period. So, and we're going to June. So if you wanna do it, you know, at, at the end of, in the middle of May to the end of June every week, you can do that. Um, or you can start earlier, you can start later. It's really flexible. We just have deadlines so that we can help you find people to be in your group. But we're also providing you training and that's an online training with a space, kind of telling you the things you need to know. Um, and then after the training, we offer info sessions. So if you watch the self-directed training and you still have questions, then we're here for you. So that's really our intro to it. Something that you might be interested in or you, you think you might be interested in or you'd like to explore it some more. Just let us know. You can let us know tonight. You can let us know tomorrow. You need to let us know in the next two or three weeks, though. So because we're designing, we put it all together for registration. So we would want your circle to be on there. Um, questions? Eleanor, have you been in a group before? No, have not. That's really interesting. I'm glad you're here. Um, yeah. We have a we have a website that hosts all of our groups. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gives you kind of a picture of what the groups are about, the different ones, and a little bit about the schedule, the proposed schedule. And then you can kind of sign up for it there. Mm -hmm. So we've got this whole organizational thing to try to get people in the door to kind of, you know, engage with one another. Yeah. Or just let us know and we'll, we'll have a phone conversation with you. Yeah. Yeah. The, the closest thing, I our Torah session on Wednesdays, yeah. is, is kind of close to being a, a temple circle the way it stands, because it's usually the same people. And, uh, but mm -hmm. we, in a circle, you tend to get a little more person, uh, personal, I think. There are mm -hmm. deeper conversations that we want people to have to really get to know each other and build a, a network for that personal network for themselves. Yeah. Hey, and Eleanor, you've been to that. So the difference between the Torah study and my Hav Torah study is I dedicated the first 15 minutes to talking about our lives so that we could actually kind of get to know each other a little bit Very more. Nice. 